Welcome to a TV20 news break. I'm Dan Monroe. The city of Cleveland recently announced their new low mod solar power home pilot program. Here's TV20's Alex McTurna with more. The new low mod power pilot will be providing federal grants to 10 low income families in the city of Cleveland in order for their households to have solar panels installed, with Mayor Justin Bibb hoping to see more families benefit from the green economy. The city of Cleveland is really excited to launch one of the first ever uh, community co-op solar projects in the city of Cleveland focused on supporting low-income residents to make sure they achieve and receive the benefits of the green economy. And as one of the most energy burdened cities in the country, it's important that we have an entire citywide approach uh, to address this issue. Along with reducing a household's carbon footprint, solar panels can slash utility bills from hundreds of dollars down to zero, a fact that program manager for Solar United Neighbors, Tristan Rader, says can be life-changing. For the folks that will get picked to go solar through this program, it's going to be life-changing. They're, they're going to uh, get a free solar system on their roof that's going to eliminate their utility bill most likely, or at least significantly reduce that, which means going forward in the future they're not going to have a utility bill. So it's a pretty big benefit for them. It's a big benefit for us in the city too because we're going to be able to study this and better understand how we can address these barriers moving forward. Nonprofits like Solar United Neighbors provide specialists who can determine if your house is suitable for solar panel installation, while also pairing you with other solar interested residents in order to bring the total cost down. Solar United Neighbors is here to help people through this process. And they do this in a number of different ways. They do this through education. So when somebody first signs up for the co-op, Solar United Neighbors will do a remote evaluation of your property. So they'll look at your property using satellite imagery and they'll look at the size of your roof, the shape of your roof, the direction, um, how much sunlight it gets, and they will give you a very honest opinion with regard to whether or not your property looks like a good fit for solar. Cleveland resident Paul Schrader became interested in solar power back in 2016. After he was given a quote by a private vendor for $25,000, he decided to join Solar United Neighbors, bringing the total cost down by more than half. This is an all-electric house. We have an electric bill of zero for six months out of the year. Uh, one of the misnomers is that, well, Cleveland's too cold. Temperature has nothing to do with it. It's light. It's a waste of time to fight something to fight a system. Change the system and you don't have to fight. The other will be obsolete. The Cleveland International Film Festival is a leader in helping the world discover the power of the film arts to educate, entertain, and celebrate an inclusive human experience. TV20's own Cornell Calhoun III had two movies that were selected for the festival, and he has more with this story. Greetings, Cleveland. I'm Cornell Calhoun III, host of TV20's Creative Focus and Hollywood Kids. I'm here at the 46th Annual Cleveland International Film Festival, downtown Playhouse Square, 1500 Euclid Avenue. I'm truly excited because two of our films, So Here We Are and Selma, Alabama, are featured in the Film Slam portion of the festival. For more information, I'm going to turn it over to Beth Radisek, who is the special program manager for the Film Slam. Film Slam is where we bring high school, middle school, junior high, and this year elementary school kids to Playhouse Square to see films from the Cleveland International Film Festival. All the films the students get to see have a Q&A after the film with directors, and every film comes with a study guide specifically written for that film. And we, so for CMSD, if your student goes to CMSD, we pay for transportation and tickets. And everyone else, it's $5 a student. Teachers and chaperones are free. So they get to see films from all around the world and they get to um, you know, ask filmmakers questions after the screenings and have an experience of coming to the Cleveland International Film Festival um, as children. So it's a great program. This year we have about 4,800 students coming and it's our first year at Playhouse Square and we are so excited to welcome everyone back. So here we are, the award-winning film set in Cleveland, Ohio shows a group of free teens that find an interesting way to cool off during the hottest day of the summer. 
Star actors Janice Manning and Logan Dior Williams discuss how they started acting, their excitement about the film festival, and what's up next. What? What about me? So here we are. <laughs> I attend St. Martin de Porres. I am in the ninth grade. I started acting by when my mother introduced me and my twin sister to Mr. Calhoun and told her that we were interested in film and playmaking. I'm very excited because this is only my second film and it has won a lot of awards and I'm very excited to do more. In the future, I might be interested in playwriting, but I'm not sure yet. The breeze. It's 105 degrees. What breeze you gonna find? I attend Wayport Elementary. Um, I graduate this year, I'm in eighth grade. I've been acting for a very long time. My first acting job was with Cornell Calhoun, he put me in a play when I was around like six, and that was my first acting. I didn't really know we would go this far, but I'm very happy that we did. It's just all such a great experience, and I really hope to continue it. My next field project is also with Cornell Calhoun called Illusions. I think it's important to have youth exposed to film is because when we live in a day and time like this when there's not a lot going on for our young people, when we were younger we could go to skating rings and rec centers and everything and it was safe. But today to have the children and the youth exposed to films gives them an outlet of expression to allow their creative geniuses to come forth. Another one of the films featured in the Cleveland International Film Festival was Selma, Alabama, a fictional journey of Dr. Martin Luther King, four women and a child, during the 1965 Selma, Alabama march. Selma's leading actor, Joey Billups, talks about his role as Dr. Martin Luther King and how he started acting and his next big project. I used to always follow him and I always liked em emanating, em emulating a lot of different people. And Martin Luther King had a, had a type of vernacular and demeanor that just really inspired me and uh, I just adopted him. Well, I got started in film, honestly, after being called a couple of times to be a uh, extra and uh, I was fortunate to be an extra for a part that actually gave me good FaceTime and some speaking parts, but the speaking parts ended up on the cutting room floor. But that got me started in saying, wow, I like to do this. And I just proceeded further and further into this, this profession and here I am. So many people are part of the filmmaking process. Most people think of the star actors, but nothing would be possible without the production crew. Production manager and audio technician Clarence Gilmore was thrilled to see the films get the credit they earned. And it's just a great feeling to see something that you've worked on for so long from start to finish with the bare bones of, of his genius mind and thought process. I mean, Mr. Calhoun has a very broad, broad um, uh, uh, imagination, let's say, or stories to tell. And uh, when he pitches it over, we start putting that story or imagination together from start to finish with scene development, where we're going to shoot at, who's going to be in it, how we're going to shoot. And then it's a great feeling that at the end of it, a lot of things we did, well, almost everything we've done have won major awards all across the United States and abroad to know that you were a part of something that impactful and powerful that other people actually enjoyed. It, I, I, it's beyond words. Okay, so that's a wrap, Cleveland. From the Cleveland International Film Festival, I'm Cornell Huber Callum III for TV20, We Are Cleveland. Be well, be safe. Every year, the Cleveland Guardians host their What's New event at Progressive Field, where they introduce new food options, new merchandise, and new partnerships. Uh, so leading off, a Southwest Burger will be at the Build-A-Burger location in left field. Uh, at Fat Rooster in the left field uh, bleacher area, the chicken and waffle will make its triumphant return to progressive field. Plant-based nachos at the Tostitos Nacho Stands throughout the lower level. Mac and cheese bowl at Melt Bar and Grilled in right field. Pork mac and cheese featuring Montgomery Inn pulled pork and a large waffle cone at Throwing Smoke Barbecue on the third base line. A Wisconsin Brat Burger at Brew Kettle on the third base side. And to round it out, a foot-long chili dog at Cleveland Dogs and Shakes in right field.
We've we've dwelled very deeply into our feedback that we got from our fans over the past couple of years, and you know this is my first sports service venue, so my fine dining background kind of brings a little different flavor in there. Uh, we wanted to add what what is kind of popular around town as well, kind of feeding, uh, kind of catering rather to every single palate that we have around the ballpark. With the rollout of our new brand, one of the highlights will be all the new Guardians merchandise. Over seventy thousand units have been delivered for the season, including the new home white jerseys and a full assortment of on-field gear that the players have been wearing the first week of the season. We do have an opening day series shirt and hat, so this year we chose an homage as our vendor for opening day. We offer it in the t-shirt and then in a men's fleece. Also, uh, we have caps, baseballs, two different lapel pins, something for everybody. We are stocked up on blankets, sweatshirts, knit hats and gloves, so we're ready for Cleveland weather no matter what happens on Friday. A few local community partnerships we've created for this year include a program called Swing for the Trees, working in tandem with the Davy Tree Expert Company. For every Guardian's home run here at Progressive Field, we will plant a tree in the community to help reestablish the tree canopy in Cleveland. Well, we certainly hope we plan it for us. So the more home runs, the better. Um, and for every home run, we'll be planting one tree um, in Cleveland. So uh, we're hoping for uh, a lot of home runs at home games. We'll be back right after this. You're watching TV 20 News. Celebrate the 2022 Cleveland Asian Festival, taking place in Cleveland's Asia Town, Saturday, May 21st, and Sunday, May 22nd, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Enjoy different cultures with our world market ethnic performances, fashion show, and Asian pop competition. Be part of the fastest growing festival in Northeast Ohio. Listen to live music on stage and across the event grounds. Enjoy authentic Asian cuisine from across Ohio. And check out our free health pavilion located in Asia Plaza. Enjoy live martial arts demonstrations and other activities. For more information, visit ClevelandAsianFestival.org. Welcome back to TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. With the weather warming up, it was the perfect spring day to do a little canvassing. Senator Sherrod Brown, Mayor Justin Bibb, and their team of canvassers took across the Mount Pleasant neighborhood to go door-to-door -door helping residents apply for the Earned Income Tax Credit and the Child Tax Credit. This is a true example of partnership, collaboration, and meeting people where they are and bringing government to the people. We can't forget about the importance of that and having Senator Sherrod Brown and leaders from Enterprise Community Partners who join us in this collaboration is just one opportunity, one symbol of what we can do in City Hall moving forward. The earned income tax credit can mean an additional $3,000 plus going back into the pockets of Cleveland residents, which Senator Sherrod Brown and Enterprise Community Partners Vice President Ayanna Blue Donald want to see more families take advantage of. 92% of Ohio families, anybody who has anybody who has children under 18, except for the wealthiest people in our community, uh, are eligible for this. It makes a huge difference in people's lives. One, one mother told me it gives me, it's, it's the joy of a little breathing room at the end of the month. That, that $250 or $300 check that people were getting monthly, now when they file their taxes, they can get up to a $3,000 a year tax credit uh, per child and it can make a huge difference in their lives. Really, it's a soft spot for me as well, being a single mother, having previously taken advantage of this earned income tax credit and the child tax credit before, it means a lot. It means a lot to people that are able to use these funds for whatever they need, for education, for household expenses, you name it. It's a great boost um, to stabilize um, families and to stabilize households. Habitat for Humanity, the Construction Employers Association, and Cleveland Building Trades broke ground for their latest affordable housing project in the city of Cleveland's Buckeye neighborhood. You know, as we think about the next chapter of Cleveland's story, it's these kind of investments that will allow us to close the child poverty gap, that will allow us to move beyond from being the poorest big city in America. And I believe that these kind of partnerships show you that Cleveland with the true spirit of collaboration can lead the way for the nation. And I'm looking forward to 
helping my administration make that vision a reality right all across our city. So thank you so much for yeah. allowing me here today. Habitat for Humanity selected the Buckeye neighborhood in 2016 to invest more than $13 million in affordable housing construction and renovations, with the goal of 100 houses to be completed by 2023. With this being their 84th house in the area, the organization is now shopping for the next Cleveland neighborhood to begin another round of 100 housing projects starting 2024. Finally, after being unable to join together due to COVID-19, the older adults of University Settlement were able to come together once again to ring in spring. Today we are doing a bell choir concert. Um, we're calling it Ring into Spring um, because we're excited to finally see spring. And so the songs are going to reflect that. Um, our uh, musicians are from the University Settlement Adult Wellness Program. The Ring into Spring concert is a collaboration between the Broadway School of Music and the Arts and University Settlement, a nonprofit social service agency serving the Slavic Village neighborhood. We have multiple programs um, serving the community. We have uh, youth programs. We have senior programs. That's a program that I work in. Um, we have community programs that include a uh, hunger center and a pantry. Um, and we also have community volunteer programs, um, AmeriCorps housing, uh, fatherhood, um, just try to a myriad of social service agency. So and we've been here for almost 100 years in the neighborhood. After moving into an all virtual schedule, the Ring into Spring Bell concert is the first time the seniors of University Settlement have had an in-person performance since the start of the pandemic, something that Ward 12 Councilwoman Rebecca Moore is elated to see encouraged by local organizations. So what we know is that Cleveland is a city where we have a vibrant senior population and we need to make Cleveland succeed for everybody of all ages and that especially means our seniors. I love programs like the Broadway School of Music and University Settlement because they help engage our seniors and make Slavic Village the thriving community that makes us all safe and happier. The Broadway School of Music and the Arts, also located in Slavic Village, had a key part in bringing the concert to fruition. Outreach coordinator Emily Hogue says that the school focuses on bringing the arts to where it is most needed. Wherever we feel like we can bring the arts and um, stop some of the obstacles that um, often are problems for people to go to participate in the arts. So we go to them instead of them coming to us that relieves the transportation um, barrier where mostly no cost um, or low cost which uh, takes care of the financial um, obstacle um, and we do our best to accommodate what they're interested in learning. The seniors performed a number of classic pieces on handbells and rhythm sticks, while also performing some scarf and rhythm dancing. After the concert, the audience was encouraged to join in for one final encore performance. TV20 is streaming live 24-7. Visit TV20Cleveland.com to see our live feed and more. Stay connected with TV20 wherever you go, by liking and following us on Facebook and Twitter. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page to watch our numerous programs. Coming up next, learn about what's going on with the Cleveland Metropolitan Schools with this week's CMSD 360. Thanks for watching TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. Stay tuned for more on TV20, we are Cleveland. I'm Darielle Snipes with the CMSD News Bureau. Welcome to CMSD 360, a look at news happening around the district for the week of April 24th. The amazing CMSD Summer Learning Experience is back for a second year. Registration opens on Monday, April 25th for CMSD students. The free program for pre-K through 12th grade students will be held at more than 30 school sites throughout the city. Meals and transportation are included. The summer learning experience gives students a chance to finish the year strong and participate in fun projects or activities. It begins on June 27th and lasts for five weeks for children in pre-K through eighth grade and four weeks for high school students. To learn more and to register, head to clevelandmetroschools.org. 
On Tuesday, the Board of Education will honor the volunteers who dedicate their time and talent to the district. Volunteers will attend a reception before the board holds its monthly business meeting at 6.30 p.m. All of this will take place at John Marshall High School, located at 3952 West 140th Street in Cleveland. The board meeting will be streamed live. For a link to the live stream, head to clevelandmetroschools.org. Students will be dismissed early on Wednesday for parent-teacher conferences. Parents and caregivers should contact their child's school to find out the exact time of dismissal and to schedule a conference. The girls' K-8 Winter Basketball Championship will take place on Wednesday at John Marshall High School. Tip-off is at 5 p.m. On Thursday, Charles Muni Pre-K through 8 School will host a multicultural night from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Families are invited to celebrate the diversity of the school with multicultural arts and games, and the school's new band and choir will perform. Refreshments will represent the cultures of the students at the school. Families are encouraged to wear clothing that represents their culture. Each day, more and more people receive their first, second, or booster shot of the COVID-19 vaccination. Many of our scholars have received their shot. Hear why they got the shot and are encouraging others to do the same. I got the vaccination because my grandmother encouraged me to get it. I got it so I wouldn't get COVID as bad as most people that don't have the vaccine. I got vaccinated last summer. Getting vaccinated was the best option for making sure that my grandmother and myself is safe. And the reason I got it because I wanted to protect my family because my grandparents got COVID and it scared everybody and we wanted to make sure we felt safe. I got vaccinated because I wanted to feel safer um, being in school um, and taking my mask um, down to eat and like drink and basically just to feel safe. After I got vaccinated, 75% of my family got vaccinated and about half of the people in my neighborhood. I would say do your research first because I have the same mindset that I didn't want to get the vaccine, um, but I did research uh, a lot of information first before I went and got it. So I was very nervous because it's a new fluid going in my body that I don't really know about, but after I got it, I felt phenomenal. I didn't get sick. I had, like with my second shot, like I had a little sore arm, but that was pretty, that was pretty much it. The, the vaccine, that's not only for you. Don't take that as like your own benefit because it's not just for you. Everyone else around you is also just in danger if you don't like have the vaccine. Take it so you don't get sick or even worse. I was very worried that I was going to catch it and I ended up did catching it, but it wasn't as severe as if I didn't have the vaccine. And really think about how you doing this one small thing can butterfly effect into this large scale thing where you could be protecting someone or saving someone's life in a sense. I would totally say get it to be safe in your community. And if you haven't gotten your COVID-19 vaccination shot or booster, there are standing and pop-up clinics available to you across the city. To find a clinic near you, go to guardiansclee.org. And before we go, be sure to thank our administrative professionals on Wednesday, as it is National Administrative Professionals Day. Our secretaries, administrative assistants, and support staff work hard to make sure our schools and our departments run smoothly. And for that, we thank you. Stay connected with what's going on in the district by downloading the CMSD app. You can find it wherever you get your apps. But also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. That way you will know what is happening around the district. Well, thanks for watching CMSD 360. Have a great and productive week.